We are manufacturing transgender kids. We are manufacturing their depression, their anxiety, and it's turned into a huge industry that people are profiting from after kids' lives are completely torn apart. That is child abuse. Uh, you know, I started out as a four-year-old uh, boy being cross-dressed by his grandmother, but she did make me a, a purple chiffon evening dress and she fondled over me as a female, had me standing on a little pedestal and dressing me up and, and it was almost like I was a little doll, was affirming me as a female and I never got that from her as a boy. I'm like, oh wow, I love the Hot Wheels. I want Hot Wheels. But my mom says I can't have Hot Wheels because I'm not a boy. Beginning to think I'm not the normal Japanese girl uh, who wants to play with dolls. We do look at socialization, both within the family and outside of the family. It comes down to family dynamics. Sometimes they could be simply innocent family dynamics that the child is misperceiving. My biological sex either isn't safe or isn't lovable. My uncle thought it, was, it would be playful and fun to uh, make fun of me about dressing as a female and then uh, it, that escalated where he began to molest me and, and do inappropriate things to me for a couple of years. In the Japanese culture, the youngest is preferred to be a male. I was the third girl, I was the last kid to be born in the family and I was not a male. And I really felt badly for my dad. I, I felt he got ripped off and I wanted to make up for that. I had one case in, in my practice in which a little boy between the ages of three and five increasingly started insisting he was a girl and playing with uh, you know, cross-sex toys. What was revealed in therapy was that at age three, when his sister was born, um, she had special needs, and his parents' attention was no longer showered upon their only child. He, as a little boy, internalized, mommy, daddy, you don't love me when I'm a boy. He internalized, Mommy and Daddy love girls more than boys. I need to be a girl to be loved by Mommy and Daddy. My mother made it very poignant that I was not, I was not acceptable as a Japanese girl. I, I wasn't acting like a Japanese girl should be. Sometimes she would say, I wish you were a boy. You're not a good girl. So I was like, oh, I'd be a better boy. Sadly, there are definitely children who experience abuse within the home, either sexual abuse or physical abuse, that also causes them to internalize, I'm not safe or lovable in my biological sex. My brother and I were playing um, near a park. Two men took us into a public restroom and I was fighting and biting and screaming and scratching and doing everything I could to get away from them. They told me that I had to stop or they were gonna cut my brother's penis off. I let them do whatever they wanted. I decided I was not gonna be a girl anymore, that I was never going to let that happen to me again. And that the best way to do that was to be a boy because even though they had threatened my brother, they didn't sexually assault him. And so, in my mind, that was a way to keep myself safe. But when I was 10 and I was raped, um, that sort of shattered my whole thing about my, my identity even more. When I was 12, I really, really considered suicide. When it comes to gender dysphoria in children, um, a situation in which a child's gender identity does not match his or her biological sex, there are two schools of thought in how to approach this. One school of thought says young children should be helped through family 
and individual therapy to come to embrace their bodies and their biological sex. There's another school of thought which says we should encourage these children and help them to further divorce themselves from their bodies. Have them impersonate the opposite sex. Put them on experimental puberty blockers. Put them on dangerous cross-sex hormones and even undergo mutilating surgeries as older teenagers. There are no peer-reviewed studies for using puberty blockers in physiologically normal children. We don't know where this is going to lead, but we do know this. Take a young child between the ages of nine and 12, put them on puberty blockers, and then introduce cross-sex hormones. You will permanently sterilize them, infertile for life. How could any child possibly comprehend how they would feel as adults. I'm very concerned about the dangerous ideas out there about gender. We're all being led to believe that whether a person is male or female is essentially just in their mind and how they feel and that, that it's a fluid kind of a thing and it can change. I practiced being standing up and became aggressive like the boys and I tried to play with them. I was just pretty isolated and alone. And my mom had to go in and meet with the principal and the school psychologist because I was rude and mean and I really was turning into a bully to other girls, sort of to distance myself because I just didn't want anything to do with being a girl. And then finally, we promise the children that, yeah, we'll turn you into the opposite sex with mutilating surgeries. We're gonna amputate healthy body parts. That is psychological and physical abuse at the hands of educators and our healthcare system. Institutionalized child abuse. Like it's this whole story that kind of encourages children to believe there's something wrong with them. But when you have schools that are, that are teaching kindergartners that it's possible to be born in the wrong body, that's just almost creating conditions for gender dysphoria. There is absolutely no study that's been published to prove that transitioning young children prevents suicide. The best study we have with regard to transition is in adults. And it's the best study because it lasted for 30 years and it was done in Sweden. A very large sample, within the first 10 years, it seemed like there was some relief, but by that 10th year, there was a noticeable increase in anxiety and depression and suicidal thoughts. By 30 years out, the suicide rate among the adults who transitioned was 19 times greater than the general population. So we do not have proof that transition prevents suicide. Part of the transgender movement is saying, well, if you don't like yourself, just change yourself. And to me, that's promoting really the worst possible kind of dysfunctional thinking. Just do whatever you need to, to physically change your body. Most girls at some point have a time when they're angry at their body, where they don't fit in, or their body's developing in a way that they don't like. If we tell kids like, well, if you don't like it, it's okay, you can just transition to the opposite gender, rather than teaching them that it's normal and natural to be sometimes uncomfortable with your body. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association reports that as many as 98% of boys who are confused about their identity will come to accept their biological sex by the time they are adults, as long as they are not encouraged in their confusion. I'm very concerned about the message to kids about not only that male and female are fluid conditions and that one can become the opposite sex, but that, that male and female is, is on a spectrum and that there's many conditions in between and, and that this is all part of healthy sexuality and healthy gender expression, whereas science is taking us in the complete opposite direction. Okay, science is taking to us in the direction of saying, no, no, no. Every cell in the body, every organ in the body 
is male or female. I wasn't really a boy and I wasn't really a girl. I was a kid who had some mental health issues that needed to be addressed. And what worries me is that if you're a kid who doesn't fit in at all and there's this group that's going to say, come over here and you can fit in, that a child will gravitate towards that who is isolated and ostracized. That would have been so seductive. Having a place where I could go, where I fit in, no matter what, I would have loved it. And what concerns me is that a lot of these groups are run by older adults who have mental health issues that they haven't dealt with. They're almost grooming children and encouraging them to embrace their dysfunction and to be sexualized. Uh, the pharmaceuticals, no doubt, they do financially, they, they do benefit, like, because these, these hormones, you have to stay on for the rest of your life. Where by the time I was um, 42 years old, I saw no other way, I had no other vehicle except to accept the diagnosis of gender dysphoria and then opt for a surgical transformation, which I did and lived as Lori Jensen for eight years. Biological sex declares itself. A little baby who pops out of his mother's womb with testicles and a penis has a functioning Y chromosome in every cell of his body. A little human baby who pops out of her mom with a vulva has two X chromosomes in every cell of her body. We are declaring medical facts. If there's a woman who needs a kidney transplant, she will do better with a kidney transplant from a woman because a kidney from a male, every cell in that kidney that's coming from the male is gonna have a Y chromosome. And her body will see those Y chromosomes and recognize it as foreign. And so there's a higher chance that she might reject the kidney. Male and female is from before birth, a difference in every cell of the body. Medicine science is taking us more and more in that direction. We have a whole specialty in medicine called gender specific medicine. A mere five years ago, such a position would be considered medical malpractice to tell a biologically healthy girl that she is capable of consenting to a double mastectomy of her healthy breasts. There are already cases of young women who are now in their late 20s who transitioned. They were told by doctors and therapists that their psychological distress was all due to their being transgender. These young women, as teenagers, so quote unquote transitioned to being male, almost 30 years old, they realize, I am a woman. I always was, I was born, I was born female, I always was female and always will be. Oh my gosh, what did I do? My breasts are gone. Their fertility is gone. They have permanent changes from the testosterone that they took. Deep voice, five o'clock shadow, enlarged Adam's apple. These women are enraged. We know that the greatest medical fraud in history is to sell, tell someone that they can change genders when in fact it's medically impossible. Transitioning isn't a cure for, for someone who has gender dysphoria. If you just tell them to transition, you're ignoring the cause. You're just putting that Band-Aid on and pretending like everything's okay, and it's not. Like now when I start having feelings of discomfort or body hatred, I know where it's coming from. I've learned the skills from therapists so that I can manage that. And so I don't hate myself, so that I don't have to self-harm, so that I don't feel like I'm in the wrong body. And all that came from therapists who helped me learn these skills. If I had gone to therapists and they had said, you're right, you're born in the wrong body, that would have just confirmed like every, every idea I had about how much I hated my body. When my daughter was born, it was the first time in my life that I was proud of myself and my body and really happy to be a woman. My body must be okay because it made this wonderful baby. I would never have that experience if I had medically transitioned. My body would be rendered like incapable of having kids. 
I think about like what my life would be like if I hadn't had children, if I had, if I had medically transitioned. Sometimes it gives me nightmares thinking about if, if that school psychologist way back when I was, you know, in first grade had said, Aaron is actually a boy who was born in the wrong body and started to medically transition me. I can't even reconcile like what it would be because for me, my children have given me such, such joy and, and opened up the world to me. Every policy, especially as it relates to children's education and health management, must be rooted in physical reality. Biological sex is reality. And decisions made based on gender ideology can damage our children for life.